It's probably worse than you think. I'm in my Airbnb right now. It was run by a property manager as so many listings are. The prior owner was satisfied with them, but he shouldn't have been. He thought his $45,000 per year was great. He thought Airbnbs should simply pay for themselves. He thought he'll make money on the appreciation. This mindset is so wrong. I hope he never finds this video. Oh, and by the way, I am a property manager. After three years of managing this property, I'm making three to four times more than the prior property manager. And here's the thing, I did nothing. This looks identical than how it looked when I bought it. Minus behind me here, those are sculptures that I decided on. The other host had a $20,000 painting up there which is a bad idea in all cases, except if you're maybe renting an Airbnb for 10,000 bucks a night. If you're new to this channel, I'm Danny, and one of the things I do is run a boutique property management firm I started after working at Airbnb. Before we get into how I was able to increase the revenue of this property by so much, let's go back a few steps and talk about my mindset when I'm investing. When I'm investing in a short-term rental, I want to buy an existing short-term rental. The reason is because when you're investing, there are so many assumptions that you need to make that I want personally to limit those assumptions. And so I would rather even overpay for an existing Airbnb rather than make a whole bunch of more assumptions about how much revenue this Airbnb could make. I might do that if I'm super familiar with the neighborhood and, the, and then the market, but let's face it, most investors, we're going outside, we're investing outside of our immediate neighborhood because that's where the best ROIs are. It would be unlikely that the best ROI you can get is in your market. Okay, so when I'm going out there, I'm looking for existing Airbnbs. And particularly, I'm looking for Airbnbs that are managed by a property manager. And then I'm looking at how that Airbnb has been managed and what I can do to improve it. For example, I was looking at one that had a 4.52 rating. Now I know that getting an Airbnb from 4.52 to 4.9, that represents a percentage increase in revenue that I'm gonna go over. In addition, dynamic pricing, photos, and optimization, online optimization. And these four things roll into an, an increase in occupancy and nightly rate. I'm gonna cover all of those five now. Okay, so how did I get to 45,000 to over 160,000. What was I looking for before I made that investment? I'm gonna share with that, that with you now. So in this particular listing, the prior property manager was not using dynamic pricing. That for me is just a gold mine. If I take two listings, identical listings, which we have here, that's why it's such a great example. One is not using dynamic pricing, one price all year round, midweek, weekend, low season, high season. It was 500 bucks a night, this place. And then I come in, and I do dynamic pricing, I might go down to 250, but I'll go up to a thousand. And so that'll increase my occupancy. That change represents a 50% increase in the revenue. In this case, that's about $22,000. The rating on this one was not terrible. It was, I forget exactly, but it was like 4.85. I am going to do a 4.95. After three years, I have a 4.99. 4.95 was my initial assumption. And that's going to get me an increase of 5%. Now, as you go more, for uh, if you can increase the listing 0.2 from a 0.7 to a 0.9, that represents 10%. And then 0.3 is 15% and so on. So that 5% increase represents about $2,000. Now, again, this is what I'm doing when I'm on Zillow, when I'm looking for Airbnbs. I want to see that they're managed. And oftentimes you can tell they're managed because it says so in the Airbnb or it's managed by X property management. Okay, you can tell that from the Airbnb. And so if this listing, you have to find it on Airbnb. You might find the listing on Zillow and then, but you have to go to Airbnb and find it on Airbnb. Confirm it's an Airbnb and it has a 4.5. Okay, I'm gonna add plus 20% to my expected revenue. No dynamic pricing to my dynamic pricing. I'm gonna add plus 50%. Now the photos for this particular listing, I didn't give myself any bonus there because the photos were actually really good. In fact, I remember years ago, years before I bought this place, looking on Airbnb as a guest and seeing this place. And it was amazing. I, I knew I would, in my mind, never be able to stay there or definitely not buy it. But I very specifically remember seeing this listing on Airbnb and just being blown away by the awesome photos. So I gave myself zero revenue boost there. But listing optimization, if you take a listing 
that looks like all the other listings and you apply my optimization principles to it, to the photo, to the photo layout, to the title, to the text, and some other settings, you can you can see a boost of five to 10%. That represents on this listing about $5,000. Now here comes the big one. All of that summarized up increases my occupancy. Now they were getting 30% occupancy. They were basically only renting out for the weekends. I am going to get, I predicted 95% and I'm actually getting 94.5%. That represents an additional $95,000. There's a few other categories that are specific to individual listings that I'm gonna go over in a, in a video coming up soon. A little teaser, I purchased a new Airbnb and it also is run by an existing property manager whose, whose owner was satisfied with that property manager, but again, should not have been. And I'm gonna go over why that was the case in this, in the, in the Airbnb that I that I bought recently, there's even more instances of just I'm simply clicking a button on Airbnb and I'm increasing my revenue 10%. That's why this strategy is so awesome and powerful and why when I go and buy Airbnbs, I'm gonna look for existing Airbnbs because I know with very good certainty, here's what they were doing, here's what I can do, and this is the incremental revenue that I can make. So, so all of those in total equal $166,900. I actually made $164,000, so very accurate. That represents 371% increase, almost four times the amount. Hey, by the way, before I forget, if you interact with this video, like, commenting, sharing, subscribing, YouTube will automatically show you my videos in the future without you having to worry about it. Before I get to a summary of this video, I want to let you know how the revenue estimate relates to the purchase price. This is very important because we want to make sure, we need to make sure that our investment is a good one. And so after I make that revenue estimate, I call it payback years. The purchase price needs to be no more than five times my annual revenue estimate. In this case, it was about $166,000. So that equals times five, 844,000. So in this particular case, I know that if the purchase price was below $844, then in all likelihood, I'm gonna have a very good investment on my hands. And that's exactly how it turned out. In summary, I hope that I have presented a clear case. If you're going to buy an Airbnb, that you should buy an existing Airbnb that is poorly managed. And you can apply my filters based on how it's poorly managed to figure out how much more revenue you can make. And the reason why I prefer that even up until the point of overpaying is because there's so many assumptions involved with making an investment. I want to reduce my risk by reducing my assumptions. And the best way I have figured out how to do that is to buy an existing poorly managed Airbnb and manage it well with my strategies. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have suggestions for videos that I should do, leave them in the comments and I hope to see you there. Until next time, happy hosting.